And that's when I found that what I had been taught about Islam wasn't consistent with the sources. Turns out Muhammad had started uh, his, let's call it a prophetic career, in 610 AD. He dies in 632 AD, and in that time he goes from peaceful, starting off with a message of worshiping one God and helping widows and orphans and travelers, etc., takes that message and it becomes increasingly more violent until the time he dies. If you ask virtually any Muslim, what's the first surah of the Quran you memorized, the first chapter of the Quran you memorized? It's chapter 112, very short. I'm gonna have Lee repeat. The point of this is the middle verse there. God is not a father, God is not a son. That is the point of this chapter and virtually every Muslim I've ever met says that was the first chapter of the Quran they memorized. And Muhammad says, according to the traditions, that this chapter of the Quran is worth one third of the Quran's theological content. God is not a father, God is not a son. Most Christians that I encountered were unwilling to explain why they believed what they believed. Uh, if I asked them questions, why do you believe the Bible, they'd have no response. If I said to them, where did Jesus claim to be God in the scriptures, they, would, they wouldn't know. God forbid if I asked them about the Trinity, <laughs> they have no clue. Uh, what is the Trinity? Well, it's God is three in one. Well, God's not a shampoo bottle. What does it mean for God to be three in one? Can you explain this to me? And no one could explain these things. But I finally ran into a friend who was able to start explaining to me why he believed what he believed, why he thought the Bible was reliable, why he believed Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. Turns out he had been an atheist growing up, and so he had to actually wrestle with this himself when he became a Christian. 